Cancer is one of the most feared words in any language. Few people need to be reminded of the virtual life of its own the disease has taken on in recent years, despite trillions of research dollars and decades of investigative study. Unless you've been through it, it's hard to imagine the horror of the dreaded diagnosis, the pain and emotional strain of the surgery, chemotherapy and radiation that follow, and the numbness brought on by the all too common, sorry, there's nothing more we can do. The mere thought is enough to strike the fear of God into all of us. Welcome. My name is Finbar Dunphy and for the last three years I have worked with an institute that offers a totally new and highly successful approach to the whole problem of cancer. Our science is called Biological Terrain Management and it's a combination of cell optimization and biophysics. Now that probably doesn't mean much to many people, so let me explain very briefly. Essentially what happens is this. Your cell values are manipulated to where your biological terrain, your body if you like, becomes a very difficult place for the cancer to survive in. Kind of like potatoes trying to grow in gravel instead of in good rich soil. So it addresses the underlying reason for the presence of the cancer and so stops further growth. It's the only sensible approach to the problem, the only one that guards against the possibility of a later return, metastasis, and the development of new primary sites in the body. And it's the science that has changed the lives of the people you are about to meet. When I was diagnosed with the uh, breast cancer, I, I, had, uh, I went ahead and had the lumpectomy. And when I went back to the doctor and he told me he wanted to do aggressive chemo, uh, he said that if he would have known that I was not going to go forward, he would have done a full mastectomy. Uh, I was diagnosed in 1999 with a squamous cell carcinoma. A malignant tumor in my jaw and first donor bone did not take I had to reconstruct the second time and within three months uh, I had another live tumor uh, located this time in a basically inoperable position at the base of my brain and behind my eye and my ear uh, which uh, big decisions had to be made as to whether we tried the surgery and uh, gave up the quality of life we had always enjoyed. It was uh, August 2001, mm -hmm. wasn't it a year and a half ago, and I was diagnosed with uh, ductile carcinoma in situ. They call it DCIS, it's an early stage of breast cancer, fortunately. And the because it was scattered, and it wasn't really in one lump, the doctor recommended a mastectomy. I got very sick at home. I'd been sick for quite a while. And then the last six weeks, I just got so sick I couldn't go. I couldn't hardly go from my bed to the restroom. I went to my family doctor and he t advised me to go to the specialist. And it ended up that I have cancer of the liver. I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer June 21st, 2002. I was told that uh, chemotherapy would be the route that I would need to take. After about six months of treatment, I was informed that the chemotherapy was not working. And uh, the doctor basically told my father to go ahead and get my affairs in order that this was basically the end for me. We did do some additional uh, chemotherapy and my surgeon said, frankly, uh, it has never been proven to cure anything, but uh, I did it because, you know, we were looking at death. They tell you they want to save your life and they want to give you the best chance possible to live and you know you want your best chance and you're reaching out for anything to hold on to life. There is no chemo for what I have. There is no pill for what I have. And I felt so violated. I felt that this was such a criminal act that I'd been given 
these poisonous drugs for six months. The decision to go a whole different path was probably one of the hardest things I had to do. When I went back to the doctor, he told me it would only be three to six months that I would live and that I could do anything I wanted to do or find anybody I wanted to. And so I did. I found the Wellness Center. A young lady was put in my life that informed me about the Wellness Center. And when I called the Wellness Center, Bob was the only person in six months that had given me any hope. I immediately start, started treatment in December with the Wellness Center. And um, after my first treatment, I got up the next morning and I felt like myself. I felt normal. It's strange, I felt as if I didn't have cancer. Shortly after that, I learned about the Institute. So we decided, um, my husband's been very supportive all along the way, and um, we decided that I would go for this. And by the good chances, uh, I heard about the Wellness Center and uh, made a phone call, made a trip, uh, made a decision to enter the program that, uh, that Bob offers uh, his clients. And we followed it as best we could. And uh, within six weeks, I was watching uh, my tumor go down. It had gotten to be, oh, the, half the size of a, of a ping pong ball. And within six weeks, uh, you could hardly see it. So we knew, we knew that that uh, tumor was being eliminated or detoxified or whatever you might want to term it. I didn't want uh, chemotherapy. I said I've seen too many people die from it, so I don't want it. And I told my wife I'd just take my chances otherwise. And uh, within 12 weeks, uh, I had CAT scans again uh, through my oncologist and uh, the, uh, the radiologist who read the CAT scans and uh, x-rays that they took found no, uh, no tumors, no malignancy. It was gone. So uh, I decided to give it a try and we come up and we talked to them at the institution and uh, they told me they had good news for me that uh, they could not take care of my leukemia. So I continued with the program. Uh, the growth stopped. I started feeling better. I started looking better, getting a lot of compliments. I decided at that point, uh, when I went, when I started with the Wellness Center, that I would receive no more chemo. And I know the medical profession feels I've lost my mind, and they're amazed every time I go back. They keep feeling it's coming back. That my oncologist told me it would be back because I had a, a invasive carcin a ductal carcinoma and that it would come back probably as lymphoma. Uh, my energy level is uh, about 90% now. You can't live with a malignant tumor and, and cancer. Uh, it's a dastardly disease. So I immediately got energy and relief uh, as soon as I started my program. That has been a little over two years, which has really been a life-saving project for all of us, and especially me. Last week, I went in for a CAT scan. He examined my liver, and he tried to walk out of the, out of the room, and I said, excuse me, wait a minute. I need to know the results of my pancreas, what is going on in my pancreas? He said, nothing. I said, what does nothing mean? It's inactive. I said, what does inactive mean? It means that the cells are dead. They're just, they've died. They're just sitting there dead. And I, uh, no, I suppose it was a few months after the treatment was done that I had an Amos test almost a year after the diagnosis and it came back perfectly normal, you know, no indication of cancer. And I feel better now than I have seriously in my entire life. 
when you get into your math with cancer, you're, you're, you're looking for, uh, for a miracle. And to me, uh, a mild miracle just begins to cut the surface. Uh, and I'd just like to say that my leukemia is gone and uh, after a year and a half, and now I just feel great. And the things we learned in the process aligned with the things that we believed about how God made us. That, that the Institute treated the cancer in a way naturally. And strengthening the immune system in the way God made our bodies. Instead of going after the symptom, we went to the root. I'm a year and a half later and uh, all of my blood work, everything is clear. So I'm very thankful. I'm just too happy to be able to be here and with my family and to enjoy all the good life that we're having. When you're faced with an illness like mine, and when Western medicine and doctors tell you there is no hope, I know that this is the place to be. And uh, we have the Wellness Center to, uh, to be thankful for. And I would just like to say to you, uh, let's do this about 10 years from now again, and we'll see where we're at. <laughs> The people you met here today are not actors or actresses. They're just a few of the hundreds who are beating cancer using our unique technology. We want you to beat it too, but we know it's not an easy decision. Just ask Arlene about the weeks she spent agonizing over what to do, which way to go. But ask her also if she's happy with the decision she made. That beautiful blonde hair is all hers. And when you look at Jeanette, you marvel first at her overcoming such a killer as pancreatic cancer, and second, at her doctor's seeming reluctance to tell her the good news. Give a second thought to Julia's case history. Three months to live, transformed into the celebration of two more birthdays. And what a success story Ed tells. His victory over leukemia should be a source of great encouragement to all those who've been diagnosed with this dreaded form of cancer. Then there's Kathy with her inflammatory breast cancer, now a thing of the past. Here's a picture of inflammatory breast cancer as detected by our infrared thermal imaging camera. Notice the asymmetry or difference between the two breasts. Is there another technology that could give you this kind of early warning? I don't think so. Is there another technology that could get rid of it as easily? If there is, I don't know about it, and you probably don't either. And finally, we have Steve, who has rewritten all the rules of survival. He makes no sense, not as sense is commonly understood. Briefly put, he defied and continues to defy death, yet he lives a full and productive life. Meanwhile, the search for better drugs, improved forms of chemotherapy, etc., continues. Each year, thousands of well-meaning people take part in events billed as efforts to raise funds for further research. In their race for the cure, these people march, hold hands, sing songs, and cry for the cameras. But are they racing for the cure, or are they running from the cause? Because you see, science has already moved on. The only things still firmly entrenched are the fear, the suffering, and the staggering death rates. The people you met today took control and they're winning. We want you to be in the winner's circle too. And the secret, take control.